There was a big part of me that thought that transitioning and becoming my true male self would be the answer to all my problems. That bringing my body in line with my understanding of who I am would make my life easier and simpler and stop putting me in conflict with virtually everyone and everything. That was decidedly not the case. Every time I go to a new healthcare provider, I am forced to come out all over again and often end up doing more educating about my body and my health issues than the other way around. When I've needed to see a gynecologist because there's very little data available to them about what is normal after a long-term exposure to high-level testosterone, they're only ever able to make a guess at best. And the insurance companies don't seem to know how to code those treatments for someone who is legally male, which means I always have to pay out of pocket. Coming out to my partner as trans lost me my first long-term relationship because, as she put it, if I wanted to marry a man, I would have married the nice Jewish boy my parents picked out for me. I lost many of my connections to the queer community and most of my chosen family because my former lesbian feminist sisters felt I had sold out to the man by becoming one, instead of just embracing and celebrating my masculinity while remaining female. Coming out to my family got me disinvited from standing up at my sister's wedding as part of the bridal party, though I am grateful to say that that same sister was the first to step up to help take care of me when I finally was able to get my gender-confirming top surgery. Even finally being able to get legally joined as husband and wife to my now ex-wife, something I never thought could happen in my lifetime and that I desperately dreamed about as a kid, meant that for her comfort and peace of mind, I had to edit my life story so that all the incongruent pieces fit the narrative that we were just your average, hetero, cisgendered, suburban couple. Summers spent at Girl Scout camp became just scout camp. And the fact that we met at an all-women's college was neatly repackaged as us having attended a tiny liberal arts school in upstate New York. As a recovering addict whose sobriety is founded in the core principle of honesty, though, these half-truths felt like a slow erosion of my integrity, a high price indeed to pay for the, quote, normality I always wanted. I discovered a whole new level of discomfort in trying to date as a single trans man because I could never figure out what the right time to disclose my status was with each new potential partner. Whether they were female or male, at some point the question of possible physical intimacy arose and there was a significant level of awkwardness in the discussions that followed as we both danced around the topic of my genitals. Transitioning was definitely not the panacea I had hoped for. What it has given me are some unexpected gifts, though. While living as a masculine female, and particularly during the early phases of my transition, I was forced to suppress my more feminine aspects as they seemed to somehow invalidate my maleness. I consciously altered the way I walked, the way that I spoke, even how or if I expressed my emotions. If I let my guard slip, I was told over and over again that they proved I wasn't really male. Now that I'm read by most people as a cisgendered male, I am free to express all those parts of myself, which ironically often lead people to conclude that I am a gay guy. <laughs> when my father broached the topic of genital surgery, much to my surprise, it was my mother who most readily understood that even if it were possible for me to receive something like a full penile transplant, I still wouldn't choose to go that route, because the whole point of that type of physical intimacy for me would be for the purpose of procreation, and the children fathered would still not be mine at a genetic level. It'd just be a super fancy and super expensive means of artificial insemination, and my gender has never been tied to that part of my anatomy. The biggest gift has been in becoming aware of just how much of my mental, emotional, and physical energy I had to devote to monitoring my safety as a woman, particularly as a masculine woman. Being a butch dyke often made me the target for the fear and rage of men who felt threatened by my very existence, as if by claiming my own masculinity, I was somehow a threat to theirs. 
From the moment I stepped foot outside of my front door, I was constantly assessing my surroundings, proximity of other people, their words and attitude, as well as how they seemed likely to respond to anything that I might say or do, all so that I could keep myself safe. When I completed my transition, I was shocked at the profound level of silence in my mind once all those processes were finally shut off. This visceral reminder of just how deeply affected I have been by the systematic misogyny and toxic masculinity is one of the reasons why I'm here and telling you my story. Because as a man, I found that other men are more receptive to changing their perspective and their behavior when they can see it through my experiences. And for all the women of the world, and for those who identify as neither or both or somewhere in between, I want to use whatever power I have to make sure that they too can experience the freedom of being and living in a world that is safe and nurturing. I have made it part of my life's mission to also be an example to trans youth and their families, one that neither I nor my family had and could sorely have used as someone who has learned to live as their authentic self and is happy and healthy.